Hello guys, Francis here. Welcome to our crash course on website development. Well, in this crash course, we're going to give a vivid introduction as to how to start to develop a website professionally. What, the, what are the tools you need to develop your website? And what are the elements you're going to need to to follow up from both the back end and the back and the front end of website development. So let's go on and let's look at some of the cool things. Before we go on, in developing or thinking of developing a website, there are various ways of going through, but the best way to be a professional developer is to learn some amount of coding, to learn how to edit HTML and CSS files, of which we are going to be looking at in this crash course and we're also going to look at how to work on the back end and how to work on the front end as well so what goes into website development first of all there are two ways the front end roadmap and the back end roadmap the front end roadmap is such that it starts with first of all learning the basics so every web developer must have a basic knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That is the main thing every web developer must have some basic knowledge about. So it means you must start learning what HTML is, what are the elements in HTML, what are the tags, how do you start working in HTML. Then also learn about CSS, what is CSS, how does CSS help in website development, as well as JavaScript, the ultimate part of the website development and how to be to be more responsive is to also focus and learn JavaScript. So responsive web page is used in all types of modern website development. These days, websites does not follow the static um, um, ways as it was in the past times where you can just develop a simple static website. Unless maybe you're thinking of developing a simple blog or just an ordinary thing. Other than that, you need to develop a responsive website. And the EMS Safari script, which is a JavaScript 5, is supported in all modern browsers and you will take, we're going to take a look at um, all these functions in the EMS 5 and also some of the cool functions in JavaScript. So in going on JavaScript or in going on website development, these are the steps. HTML, there are two types of HTML. We're going to look at HTML and the HTTP or SHR. We're also going to look at CSS and the CSS responsiveness, JavaScript and the ES, um, ECMA script 5. These are the, uh, the, the route to the front end of website development. Step two, is to dig deeper so when you feel comfortable with html and css it is time now to dig deeper into website development and you should learn how to use roadmap uh, use maps font icons and etc in html in javascript side you should learn how to use the html DOM, and you should also learn how to use ajax and json for making server requests so html uh, on going deeper you need to go on the HTML DOM, Google Maps, Google Forms, Google Chat, as well as CSS icons, and also the XML, JSN, and Ajax. Those are the, the other elements that you need in dipping deep into uh, website development. Step three is to choose a framework. So it is time to look at frameworks now after you've learned the basics, learning HT, basis of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you dig deeper into some of the elements, it is time for you to choose a framework. On the CSS side, you should choose a framework for responsive web design like Bootstrap, Material Design, Adobe 3.CSS. These are the major um, frameworks you can choose for CSS. On JavaScript side, you should learn at least one modern framework like React.js, AngularJS, Vue.js, or W3.js. These are the, um, the frameworks that you can use to build your site on CSS, on JavaScript. Maybe uh, the probability of J uh, jQuery has passed the top. jQuery is also a framework you can also use to build. So this, from the list over here, you can see on the CSS, um, we've put the most um, uh, popular ones like the Bootstrap and the W3 CSS. As well as on JavaScript, you have jQuery, AngularJS, Vue, and JS, and also W3.js. These are the, um, the popular frameworks available. When you're looking at the XML side, we have S, XXLT, 
XPath and XQuery. Those are also the frameworks that you can choose to use to build your website. So looking at this scenario on the front end, it means there's a lot you can get to do to get starting and then build amazing platform. So this is how the framework looks like. So right from the start, you look at the basics. The basics looks at this element, points to your HTML, your CSS, and your JavaScript. And JavaScript, you can choose a framework like jQuery. And digging deeper, it means you come here to look at some of the JavaScript responsive webs related. And frameworks that falls under CSS, and also uh, uh, preprocessors that also falls under CSS. Then you can also look at HTML related uh, testing tools and frameworks and also um, uh, package managers and all that. Then you can also check out the, some of the models and some of the frameworks as well. Like we looked at then some of the methodologies you can also look into. So building a website professionally you need to go through this simple front end roadmap to get yourself acquainted and become a professional. Let's go to the back end section. The back end is where you build the, the actually the like the server for your website. So the back end has to do with setting your service and coding and the same of the language to look at. Some of the language to look at are what we have here. So if you're thinking of going to the back end, so if you can develop back end and front end, that's when we, we call you full stack, full stack developer. So every full stack developer must know some uh, SQL, PHP, ASP, or Python. You can use any of these platforms to develop or to work on your back end. Then on the JavaScript side, you can also use SQL, Node.js, MySQL, and MongoDB. These are the frameworks that falls under the back end. So the roadmap on the back end is a little bit um, like this. So it's, it's on Either you matching up to Node.js, Ruby. Node.js is a very popular framework for JavaScript and is doing a lot of great stuff. And you can look at that to develop your backend. Or you can think about Python, also very popular and great. It helps great in doing a lot for backend development. Then you can also look at other side like um, PHP. PHP is also doing great stuff. And so this is basically the back end to website development. So in looking at the roadmap on what to do, these are this is a roadmap to go through. So then what is HTTP? Oh, HTTP, yeah. HTTP actually stands for Hypertext Markup Transfer Protocol. So it's um it's like the protocol you're going to need to set up your website or domain name. And WWB is also communication between web clients and service. So getting all these ideas as to what your website is going to run on, realize that all websites will start with HTTP and it also have some WW. So maybe you have like www.google.com, something like that. That is That will be the name of your website. So you're starting to, or thinking about how to build your website, you need to know some of these concepts and how to respond to website development. So when wide web communication is between the client and service. Clients are often browsers. Um, clients will often visit browsers like Chrome, Air, Safari, but you can buy any type of the program. Um, uh, but they can uh, buy any type of the program or device. They can also access it from any browser or that. So servers are most often computers to hold the cloud. So we have, first of all, the front end whereby clients have access to the website developed and they can access the website from either of the browsers. Then we have the back end where you're going to have your service and where you're going to host your website. Now, there are some things to know before you start thinking about developing a website. We have what we call domains and domain names. The domain names are necessary as the uh, uh, universal resource locator or it helps people to be able to access your website after you develop it. And we're going to look at that vividly in the next tutorial. The next thing is to look critically at HTML. So what is HTML? Yeah, HTML is actually stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So HTML is a standard markup language for web pages. 
So HTML elements are building blocks for HTML pages and HTML are represented by the tags. So HTML is like the major thing you need to be able to develop your website. About, let, let me say about 98% of websites online are all developed from HTML because it is the language of web pages. So HTML tags are in this kind of category. So let's for instance, you can have an, a tag that looks like this, like um, 2 into 2, less than and greater than size. Um, you have H1, this means heading. And you can also have something like this, which also means paragraph. So, and this will be to the beginning or the opening tag will be like that. And the closing tag will be like that. So that is how HTML um, tags starts with. So let's look at um, simple sample of HTML document. So a simple HTML document will look like this, as simple as that. So you start with, um, there's an exclamation mark, which is in two less than and greater than signs, doc type HTML. And you're also going to have instances where you have HTML land on English, indicating that this is an, um, you're writing your HTML in English. But you may necessarily not put it if you are, it's not very compulsory, but you need to have this HTML tag. So without this element, you can still use your HTML tag. Then the header section, and we also come to the, the header ending, then the body, then we also have the body ending. So we have HTML opening tag and HTML closing tag. We have the head opening tag and the head closing tag. We have the body close opening tag and the body closing tag. So this is how it works. So it means in between these two HTML tags, the closing and open, that is where your documents are going to be contained. And for heading or titles will also be contained in the head opening and closing tags. The body will be contained in the body opening and the body closing tags. So this is how our regular or simple HTML um, document is going to look like. This represents a heading. So it indicates that this is a heading and this is a paragraph. So this represents a paragraph, same as another paragraph. This opening and closing tags are used to represent um, paragraphs. The same as title, opening and closing tags here are used to represent a title of the website. We'll be looking at practical shortly. So this document we looked at is clearly explained here. The doc type declares or defines uh, is a declaration that defines documents uh, of the for the heading of HTML and the HTML um, tag itself is the element or the root of the HTML of an HTML page. So this is the root element of the HTML page. And the line here attribute defines the language of the document and the metadata, there's also metadata. This element contains a meta information about the document. And we also have chair set, which attributes, this attribute defines the character used in document. And the title here represents the title of the document and the body and the header and all of that as such. So simple HTML document, all documents must start with HTML doc type, which is what we have here. All documents in HTML must start with this and HTML document itself begins with HTML, uh, this opening tag and ends with this HTML closing tag. And the visible part of the HTML document is mainly between the body, opening and closing tag. That is mostly the visible part of the website. So this is now a simple look as in how our website uh, simple HTML tag is actually going to look like. So you, you can see from the clear arrangements that we have HTML tag here, opening tag, and we have HTML closing tag. So the opening tag starts with a uh, less than and the HTML inside and there's a greater than ending. Same as here, we have a less than, but here we have a slash after before the HTML itself and after that there is a closing greater than sign. So this is how it is arranged. First of all the HTML tags then inside it is where we have our head. So the head stays up here then the body stays under the head like that. So we have opening and closing tag for all of them. So this is a simple format or simple outlook as in how our HTML document is going to look like. So the, uh, the, the headings we're looking at is what has been explained here. So HTML headings 
are defined with HTML1 to HTML6, uh, H1 to H6 tags. So these tags are represented according to the number. So H1, for, for instance, will define the most important heading, while from up to H6 will define the least important headings. So we realize that all the headings could be displayed with numbers uh, with H1, H2, H3, depending on which one is the most prioritized, which will be um, the most prioritized will be represented by the H1 and from there descending. All right, so looking at the HTML paragraph part, we use the P tag as we have here to represent HTML paragraph. And HTML links are also defined with the A tags. So the A tags is used to define um, HTML links or links to click to get to other assets. So for this example, you can see that within this A tag, up to this side is the opening tag. We put here ref, href here, meaning reference to this link, which is metobi.com. You can you be able to reference to this link and you can check out this website. So this is a link and as such, the closing tag here defines or makes it look, make you see how it is that all tags must have closing tags, but some tags though, might be self-closing tags. So the the, the links be, um the links destination is specified in the href attribute like we've done here means you can easily it will reference you to this website for you to see what's going on. Then HTML images. So if you want to put images in your HTML website, you need to use this tag. This tag indicates as um, img is a tag that you can use to represent images in your HTML document. So the source file, what we have here, SRC, is a source file. The alternative um, text will be alt, width, height, and are all provided with attributes. So you're going to see a simple um, tag for HTML as img src equals, then you're going to see the, the link to the image or how the image has been saved, then you're also going to have the styling, how it's going to look like in this. So the width will be 120 pixels, the height will be 150 pixels. That's how the image is going to display. So this is how a simple image tag in HTML is going to look like. Then we have the HTML buttons. HTML buttons are actually the buttons to click. Let's say, for instance, if you're filling a form and you need a submit button. So how to program the or write it submit button in HTML is that you need to first of all use the stacks you have a button here then you put in the name you want to display on the button inside the stacks and then you bring the closing tag so this is how you're going to your submit button is going to show by the stack at the back end then HTML list so you see that we have this list HTML lists are defined with UL. The UL here stands for an ordered list or bullet list. And the OL here is ordered list or numbered list. So you see within this uh, greater than less than sign, you're going to see UL or you might see OL. So you can use an ordered list of bullets and you can use ordered list or numbered list to uh, list your uh, document or information in HTML. So then after that, using either of these is followed by li tags and this is the list items so a clear explanation has been done here so either you use ol other list or an other list it needs to be followed by this li here which explains the list items and it will be able to use to display so here you can see we display coffee tea milk so on a simple platform you can see this arranged like that because it's an other list that is how to write list in HTML. So in this case, we bring you to another section called tables. So tables are defined in this section, like you can see here, we start with the table tag and close with the table tag, like we have here. Now each of the tags here uh, to further has other inward tags, like we have this TR here, we have another closing TR here. So this is a table and this section represents the, the uh, table, uh, other section of the table. And the next one will come to another section and then we can come all the way. So you realize that this one provides more details 
and uh, in, in this within this tag you have the first name you have last name and you have age so let's say you're talking about somebody this details this table will be able to arrange a site so that you'll be able to enter other people's name so we're going to do research about how to set your tables and all of that so programming html can be simple all you need to do is to know how to fix in the tags and then go on so it's just a matter of some few rules to go on and you're good so the next thing is to look at our css we're going to look at how css helps css also stands for the cascading style sheet so for the sake of um practicals we're going to look at how we're going to start with our html then from there we're going to look at our css so let's go and look at how to practically put our html on our page and then from there we can follow up to work on our css hello welcome back to our practical section on html so on our website development crash course we began introducing the roadmap to website development we talked about the the roots the back end and roots the front end we also talk about how to um, use html tags and now we're about to do the practicals how to practically uh, develop a simple html document so the first thing to do is to first of all get an editor so in building html documents you need what we call editor <coughs> editors are the writing part for writing your your html document and editors could be in any form so you could have something like um and then we could use note plus plus or notepad there is notepad notepad is available in um windows um windows operating system and there are notepad in also on mac so you can use notepad to build your html or you can use uh, other advanced uh, notes uh, um, edit text editors like um uh, like atom or you can also use some like um, um sublime and others there are a couple of them out there so you can just google to um you can just google onto um google and find out any text editor available and you can choose the one that you're more comfortable with and use in developing your html document so for the sake of this class we're going to use sublime so we just download the sublime online and that is what we're going to use so in after you you um, downloaded and install sublime you're going to have this um, interface you see and this is where you start writing your codes so the first thing is to create a file so you go to this side you click on it and you go for um, save us and on the save us you can you need to create your file name so you can select any but it's required that you see your file as index dot index.html so it's required that you save your file as such then you select um, all file types or you can just select you can just save it like that so maybe you can just save it on the desktop for easy location then you can just save it at your on the desktop so so at this point when you save your file you're going to have it's looking like this like index.html like you have over here so this is how our file looks like now so the first thing to do is to put in this sim simple to greater than less than and in there you write doc you write it doc type then here you put html like this this is the first tag you're going to put in HTML and the next one is to create another two tags and in there you put head so you realize that as soon as you begin to put the head it gives you uh, an option as to which one do you want do you want HTML so we want HTML 
to put our HTML. So by straight away, let me go back so that it makes it easy. By as soon as you put in these tags and you save your file as index.html, it means uh, this uh, test editor re recognizes that you're about to create an HTML document. So it, it gives you the HTML references and gives you most tags you're going to need. So by saving like this, as soon as you type anything HTML, you realize that as soon as I started, it tells me, okay, this is an HTML, okay? So you can just click enter and it gives you the entire HTML syntax like we have here. So, or you can do them one after the other. You can just so you realize that this has given me um, extra doc type, so I need to just take it off. So this is how a simple HTML file looks like. So all you need is to just give it um, some space so that to be more open for you to now write your code. Okay, so now we can now write our code. Let me take this one off. Okay, so in here, this is the HTML heading, the first HTML tag within which all your information must be, and this is the last closing tag. And this one represents the body, and this one represents the head. So the head here, it means you're going to put here the heading. So this is my website heading. So you can just begin to type in your information like that. And inside the body, remember we talked about the P tags, which is used to represent the paragraph. So you can just put in like that. And as soon as you put it there, it tells you, okay, you want to use the P tag. So you just click enter and to give you the closing tag as well. So in here is where you can put, so this is the body of my website. So at this point, you've started working on your files and you started creating your HTML document in this format. So with this, all you need to do is to go and save it. And after saving, you can be, you'll be able to upload or open this website, this um, website. Now you can open this website in any, um, any browser at all. You can just open to this file, which indicates that index.html you can open it in any browser at all all you need to do is save your file as index.html so now let's go and open our website and let's see what we have now all right so now you can see that now when we open our file in our browser now you can see that we've had our file has opened and this is this is my my website uh, this is the body of my website and the heading of our website is going to show us this title i've indicated here so let's say if i should change this to let's say um this is my new website now let me save it and let me refresh this page now I realize that it has changed to this is my new website. So this means you write your first website and you write your first HTML document. So it's as easy as that and you can add more details. So maybe I can just add another heading. So you remember we talked about the H1 tag. The H1 tag is used to indicate your first or the most appropriate or prioritized heading. So inside the HTML H1 tags, as soon as you in subline, as soon as you begin to type a tag to give you suggestion, then you can choose from the list the one that you want. So you can put that. Um, this is my first heading. All right. So now my website is going to have heading now. So if I should save this now, and then it's important to always save when you update or you make changes in your HTML document. So that it will be able to display and now i reload you're going to see this is my first heading so i think the heading this the s is supposed to be here instead okay so it shows this is my first heading so i can now just save and reload and then straight away this is my first heading that is how amazing it is and it's easy for you to add more stuff and make more changes and make your website look quite cool so this is how to write your first html document and you're going to look at how to also 
add some CSS. 